All right, this video is going to look at constructing frequency distributions for quantitative data sets. Um, we first need to look at what a frequency is. That's the number of times a value in the data set um, occurs. If you look at this table down here, what that means is there are three different students who work two hours, five students who work three hours, so on and so forth. Um, and it's helpful to have the sum of those frequencies to know the total number of students that are in the sample. It's also really important to make sure that you understand the relative frequency or the proportion in which that data value occurs with regards to the rest of the sample. So all you're going to do to find relative frequencies is divide the frequency given by the total, and then you can write that as a fraction, a percent, or a decimal, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just makes sure that you understand that relative to the entire data set, 15% of the students work two hours um, versus like 25%, so a quarter of the students work three hours. So that's really important um, to know like relative to the data set, how much weight does this data value carry? Um, and when you're comparing other data sets, like if you were comparing two colleges um, and like one college had like 20,000 students and one college had 5,000 students, um, then their numbers overall for that larger college are going to be bigger. Um, so if comparing proportions make that comparison a whole lot better um, and a lot more reasonable, if you will. Um, then there's also cumulative frequencies. Um, in this table here, it gives the cumulative relative frequencies. Cumulative means to add up. So when you have like a cumulative final exam, it's over the entire semester. It's really important to understand that this 55 right here is not just for the data value of four hours worked. It means 55% of the data is this data value or smaller. Notice that we're adding the previous term to get that next value. So in order to get this 40% right here, you take your 15%, you add the 25%, and so 40% of the students, a little less than half, only work two or three hours. Okay, and then once you get to the very bottom, you should get down to 100%. That's kind of how you know you did your relative frequencies correctly, is that they all add up to 100%. All right, let's look at an example together. This is the amount of rainfall in inches for the year 2020. Um, for just a sample of towns, it looks like we have 50 towns. The first thing that I want us to look at is the class width. What that means is up here in the number of hours worked, our class width was just one because they, the students, I guess, just reported an integer value. So two, three, four, five to seven, where in this case, we have a range of rainfall values here. So you can find your class width by taking what's called the lower bound of each interval, so that smaller number, and the upper bound of the interval. And then if you just subtract those or find the difference of those, then you'll find the class width. So 4.97 minus 2.95 gives us 2.02 inches for our class width. All right, we're going to expand this table to include cumulative frequencies, relative frequencies, and cumulative relative frequencies. Um, I wrote this kind of in a spot that's a little bit bad. So let me erase that and then I will expand the table. All right, here we go. So the first thing that we're going to do is just the cumulative frequencies. This first one is always just going to be the exact same number. And then remember, cumulative means to add up. 
of all the things. So this next one would be six plus seven. So 13 of these towns had 6.99 inches of rainfall or less is what that would be interpreted as. If I add 15, then I get 28. If I add eight, I get 36. If I add nine, I get 45. And then it should check out that that is the same as the total overall. So we call that the cumulative frequencies. You again add up the current row that you are on and then whatever is next to get that next term. All right, let's look at relative frequencies. Remember relative frequencies mean relative to the total, what is this percent? So I could write this as a fraction. And six out of 50 is 12%. 0.12. 7 out of 50 is 14%. 15 out of 50 is 30%. So just under a third of these towns had about 7 to 9 inches of rainfall is what we could say. All right, this next one would be eight out of 50. So that would be 16%. Nine out of 50 is 18%. And five out of 50, well, that's a 10th, so 10%. And then we could check and make sure when we add all these up that they add up to one if you're doing decimals or a hundred percent. All right, let's do our last column here, cumulative relative frequencies. All right, we're gonna do the same process we did for the, cur the cumulative frequencies. We're just going to do the relative instead. So 12% goes first. If I add and then combine those, that's 26%. That's 56%, 72%, 90%, and then 100%. And so that's how we create cumulative frequencies, relative frequencies, and cumulative relative frequencies tables for quantitative data.